This is the latest in Samsung's premium line of smartphones. Their top tier, top of the S class line, the S23 Ultra. By now, I'm sure you've watched your share fair reviews. You've read ours, maybe even own one already. Well, I've lived with mine for a bit over 30 days and I'm gonna share with you some of my insights from that last 30 days of use, along with some tips and tricks, some of which apply across the lineup, others exclusively to help you make the most of your S23 Ultra. Let's get into it. You likely already know that all of the difference between the S22 Ultra and the S23 Ultra is found on the inside. Outside, they look nearly identical, except for the camera rings and the screen. Now, the screen is still gorgeous, stunning, and you should always run it at max resolution and don't be afraid to crank any brightness to your preferred level because this is one of the most power efficient note or ultra devices I've used to date thanks to the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor inside. The difference here though is in display shape. The S23 Ultra screen has flatter edges than the S22 Ultra and as an S Pen user, that's something I've complained about in previous iterations of the Note and Ultra lineups. Now, if you're lassoing content at the edges of the screen, you're less likely to have that pin fall off the edge, missing what you're trying to capture. The experience all around is still premium and everything you'd expect from this device, enhanced even further by the latest version of One UI, currently One UI 5.1 running on Android 13. So, what I really want to dig into are some of the standout features of the S23 Ultra and that is going to be mixed in with some One UI 5.1 elements which really make the device sing. Let's begin with the cameras. On this phone, you're going to get that new 200 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, 10 megapixel 3X telephoto, the 10 megapixel 10x periscope camera and the 12 megapixel front facing camera. Across the lineup, Samsung has added 8K video at 30 frames per second. I tested the S22 Ultra's periscope camera against the S23 Ultra's to see if there was a noteworthy difference between the two and I'd have to say yes. Yes, there is. For example, I went to the Getty Museum and took this photo of a statue outdoors. I was somewhere just under the length of a football field, maybe three quarters of one from the statue and took a photo with each camera system at 1x, then 3x, then 10x, then 30x, and finally 100x. Details at 100x were noticeably sharper. You can see that in the 100X shot of the statue's head, but it is most obvious when we look at the lettering on the sign from somewhere around 75 yards away. Now that is also some AI that's helping bring clarity to that sign and we have that newer, faster processor aiding in all that computational photography to give you that greater clarity. So, Clearly right now, uh, this is an addendum. This is an addition because I am not dressed like I was previously. The reason for this is I'm gonna talk very briefly about the whole moon gate. The whole, uh, hey Samsung, what's going on with these moon photos as exposed by a Reddit user who did some great tests and kind of, let's say, brought into question whether the photos of the moon that your Galaxy S23 Ultra is taking are real. That's a whole existential discussion we can get into and I really wasn't gonna to touch on this because by the time this video is posted online, it'll be done ad nauseum. Other folks have done numerous tests now, watermarking their images of the moon and showing that uh, Samsung's magic does in fact take your photo and it merges it 
with some artificial intelligence wizardry. The moon is in a fixed orbit, so it makes it easy to merge the faces of the moon, regardless of whether it's a quarter moon, full moon, whatever, it makes it easy to merge that with your photo and give you that ideal image of the moon. So is this photo, is the moon photo any more real than let's say your selfie that you take with the smoothing filters all turned on and, and any other filters turned on? Is it, is it more or less real than the food photos you take with the color optimizer, scene optimizer turned on? Artificial intelligence and computational photography is here to stay and it's giving us the features of a $1,500, $2,500, $3,000 mirrorless camera or DSLR in something that's $1,200. That's what this is all about. That's what they're trying to do is really give you the versatility and the feature set of much more expensive cameras. And those are just the camera bodies in some cases. You're still gonna spend $1,200, $1,500, $2,000 to get a lens that can shoot telephoto images like what you're getting. So really, we get into a real big discussion about what is a photo, what is your photo, what do you want, what do you think? And, and so that's why I didn't really wanna to touch on it because I think it, uh, it's a video all its own. Uh, but here it is, I just wanted to touch on it briefly because I know if I leave it out, somebody in the comments is gonna say, why didn't y'all talk about the moon photo? Well, I talked about the moon photo. You're saying to Shaka, now that we have a 200 megapixel camera, we can just take a picture and crop in. No, my young Padawan, you can't. Much to learn, you still have. Use the zoom when you wanna get up close and personal from a distance. The results will be much sharper. But if you just want very detailed images, that 200 megapixel shooter is nice, but it generates massive files. Get around that by employing the 50 megapixel option in the camera app. You'll still get solid detail, but with smaller files eating up that fixed storage. And while we're talking about options, this year's S23 Ultra gives you even more in that camera app. We've already talked about all the wonderful things you can do in pro mode with video and photos in previous reviews. Not much new there, but what's that? Expert Raw right in the camera app? Yes, now you can access Expert Raw right from there under the more tab and then access the Astro Photo feature and the new Astro Hyperlapse compressed video function. You can do Astro Photo on the S22 and S23 phones as those features are tied to the Expert Raw app, but Astro Hyperlapse, which isn't in the Expert Raw app, is S23 only for now. You'll access it by going into the camera, then the More tab, then select Hyperlapse. Set the speed to 300x. Set the time to the appropriate length, but you're going to want anywhere from one to three hours for the best results. Then. On the bottom right, tap on the star trails icon. Oh, and you're gonna want a tripod with a phone holder for this. You know, something like, like this, what I use for my reviews. Although you don't need this T-bar here, you can just stick with the main tripod, the main phone holder, and connect that directly to your tripod and you'll be fine. These are my results using that setup. Uh, this is the sky over my home. You can see some stars flow through those clouds, but at the end of the day, this is what it looks like when you don't wait for a, a cloudless, beautiful starry night. It was raining during the trial period while I had this phone, uh, many, many nights. So it was really cloudy and I did not get the opportunity to get a really good clear night sky shot. But it is possible and it looks glorious when the stars align. Samsung's camera is still not that great at capturing objects in motion like my dog. But with the Camera Assist app that you can download from the Galaxy Store, you can make that better. Once you have that downloaded, go into it and click on Capture Speed. You'll need to play with the settings here to see which works best for you. Once I changed to Prioritize Speed, I was able to catch better pictures of my pooch in motion. I haven't seen many people show you this, so I'll do a quick example of multi-exposure in the Expert Raw app. It just basically allows you to produce a photo which is a blend of two captured images. You can choose to capture your base image, 
prioritizing the light or dark areas or a more balanced look. It works best if the base image is captured over white. It may be fun for some creative individuals or something you play with once and never touch again for other folks. Now, let's spend the next few moments talking about just how speedy this phone is and some one UI tricks I've found useful. I will say that this is one of the smoothest, snappiest experiences on Android, period. On other Android phones, I've found small complaints like dismissing notifications to be clunky, but on this phone, they just swipe away with ease. A small item that belies a much larger functionality. One UI 5.1. It's like butter. It's like butter, baby. It really is a joy to use as a daily driver. What are some practical things that are gonna help you get the most out of this phone? Well, we have so many devices these days, so I think a battery widget is a must. Tap and hold the screen, choose widgets, then scroll down to battery and expand it. Choose whichever you like and place it on your desktop. Then there's the temporary mute option. Go to the shortcuts and place the phone on mute, then tap and hold. When you get into the menu, you'll see the temporary mute option. Turn it on and then set the timer for how long you want it to mute. But here's the thing, that's a bit laborious and many times I think people are gonna mute like that for timed durations in places like a movie theater, places you frequent. So, so that's where some of the focus modes come in, like theater mode. Go into the shortcuts menu, tap and hold on modes to bring up that menu, then tap on theater. You can get very granular here, but I wanna show you this neat trick. Tap on, turn on automatically, then tap on place. Now you can search for and add your local movie theater. If you like to indulge in self-care, a Swedish massage or some acupuncture, search up your physical therapist or wellness office. Heck, if you're in yoga, set it to your yoga spot. Just make sure you set a parameter for when you arrive and when you leave that location. Then tap on change on settings once that's done and be sure to set up all the things you want to turn on or off during that automatic theater mode activation. Three final items. While playing a game, if your battery gets low or you don't want to drain it, you can plug up and then swipe down from the shortcuts menu. Then in the notifications tab, tap on Game Booster. Tap on the settings cog. Then when you're in the menu, tap on the bypass option, the USB-C bypass. Now the charger is powering only the CPU and GPU, not the battery, meaning less heat, more gaming performance. And this battery under you know heavy load in my testing doesn't really get that hot anyway. I mean, the heat dissipation, the heat performance with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is phenomenal. But every little bit counts if you're a hardcore or serious mobile gamer. Caveat mTOR. I tried this with different chargers and the option actually never showed up on my review unit. It's supposed to work with PD chargers and I've read enough posts of users with this device who do have it working, so I included this tip. Good luck with yours. Next, I'm happy this feature came to One UI. You can take photos and tap and hold on objects, people, animals, and it'll cut them out for you. You can then copy and paste that content elsewhere or use the share sheet to share it or save it to your gallery. And this last tip is really neat. People have their issues with Bixby, but if you're in a meeting or a situation where you can't talk but you can text, you can go into the phone app, tap on the three dots in the upper right, enter the settings menu, and turn on Bixby text. What this does is real-time transcription of a caller, then allows you to text back in real-time with real-time text-to-speech for your caller. It's been pretty good in my testing, so you may consider giving it a go. Play around with it. See if it works for you. Not perfect, like any dictation, but it's been pretty good. See how well it works for you. And I have to say that this phone definitely works for me. I'd call it the best overall Android on the market right now for those who aren't budget conscious buyers. There are phones which may have it beat in a feature here or there, but there isn't anything in the US market which does so much and has such a premium feel and experience on Android. So if you are counting racks upon racks, Go Ultra, S23 Ultra, 
and splurge for the big storage option. You'll thank me later. And for goodness sake, get yourself a good case. I'm gonna give a special shout out to Urban Armor Gear, UAG, who sent me a case so that I can keep this baby protected. This is a review unit. So it is going to go back to Samsung when I'm done reviewing it. So I really wanted to make sure that I keep it well protected. Uh, this is not an advertisement, not a paid advertisement. I actually have purchased these cases and I've purchased UAG. This is not one, but they have some similar ones. I've purchased UAG watch straps for Apple watches, for Samsung Galaxy watches, what I'm rocking right here, uh, for all the watches I wear, all the smart watches I've tested. And I just love their gear personally. Again, I've paid for it myself. Uh, so just big shout out to them. Thank you for getting me something to keep this phone safe while I'm battering it and putting it through its paces. I'm Tashaka Armstrong for Android Central. Hey, if there are any questions about anything I talked about in this video that didn't get answered, uh, please leave them in the comments below. I'll get to them. I love hanging out and chatting with you all. Love chatting with you there. I will catch you on the next video.